Ladies and gentlemen, today we conclude our special investigative series that focuses on the final warning that was left behind by the late Dr. Thomas R. Horn that now resides in what would become his very last book. And we begin right now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Skywatch TV. I'm Joe Artis Horn. But before we dive into today's program, there's something I want you to see. Watch this. In 2023, following one of the most legendary and prophetic ministerial careers the world has ever seen, my father, the late Dr. Thomas R. Horn, began what would become his final book. After collaborating with Defender Publishing's Ali Anderson and myself, he had just completed his master manuscript before his untimely passing in October of last year. During his final conversations, he was still emphasizing that this message had to get out, that it was of paramount importance that the world was made aware of what was coming. Society has absolutely no idea what they're embracing, what they've invited in, even welcomed it as the future savior of humanity. This will ultimately be the one thing that brings about our own demise. If humanity survives, it will unequivocally alter life as we know it. By the time people realize the danger that they've embraced, it will be too late. It will have become unstoppable. Updating social credit score, citizen 1934265. One final book. One final warning. The world is not ready for what is coming. Dr. Thomas R. Horn, Joe Artis Horn, Ali Anderson. Summoning the Demon, coming March 2024 from Defender Publishing. Absolutely breathtaking, one final book, one final warning, and today, one final program, one final effort to illuminate what is in the book, Summoning the Demon. But before we begin today's broadcast, let me introduce who's here in-house to help us champion this timely and important message. First, our dear friends, Derek and Sharon Gilbert, Allie Anderson, my beautiful mother, Juanita Horn, my beautiful wife, Catherine Horn, and Donna Howell. Ladies and gentlemen, have the last few weeks been absolutely paradigm shattering. I wish with all of my heart that it were my father here mm -hmm. talking to you about his final mm -hmm. book, Summoning the Demon, Artificial Intelligence and the Image of the Beast by Dr. Thomas Horn, of course myself, and Ali Anderson. And I just, I gotta tell you, there was no way that we were going to encapsulate successfully what is in the pages of this masterpiece in four weeks of network programming. So ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to make sure you get the book, and we'll tell you how that can be done in just a few moments. If you're just joining this series, I can't encourage you enough to go back to the archives and watch the first three installations of the series. We've been talking about artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. what it is, how humanity is already desperately depending on it, and where we think this technology is headed and the supernatural implications of that conversation. And today I want to focus in on, again, the beast system and some of the prophetic implications in terms of where this technology is headed. Ali, I know that in week number two of this series, I shared what I was calling my three-part phases to how this technology would roll out and how mm -hmm. it would lead to civil unrest, essentially. Just a judicial crisis and how that would be utilized to push people towards legislation that would then clean up this massive series of fraudulent interactions with brand equity, their personhood, their names, their identities, their families, their whereabouts, their children, everything, mm -hmm. through the push for a way to be digitally authenticated. But how do you feel 
AI could also be used as the vehicle for the beast system? Well, first of all, if you take a look at Revelation 17 and 18, uh, I'm going to read for just a second and then I'll explain what I believe this is talking about. So Revelation 17, 12, and 13 states, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength to the beast. So if you listen to this and you understand, there are these kings who rule the world but really don't have a brick and mortar kingdom. Mm -hmm. Where right, do these people right, right. exist? Right. How, where is their dominion? You understand this was written by John the Revelator who was writing in his ancient culture. Right. Yeah. He had never seen right. a kingdom that wasn't brick and mortar tangible. Right. So he's trying to describe something that I feel looks very much like our online mm -hmm. uh, AI facilitated right. global right. market, yeah. like I explained in the last show, where we have global banking, global mm -hmm. supply chains, yeah. you know, all the medicine, it, utility grids, everything is handled through this interface. Right. And to me, that's that's very similar. So at this point, and I'm not going to go into a deep study of Revelation, there are a lot of Skywatch episodes on this topic, but you've seen the Harlot of Babylon, and then there's been the rise of the beast system, and somewhere in this setting was a period of time where people were required to state loyalty to the beast and become part of this commerce by accepting the mark. But when we see the whole thing fall, I just want to go down the list of things that are covered, because again, I believe that John was right writing, John the Revelator was writing in his ancient culture. But think, think about this. He writes gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, thiene wood, if I'm saying that correctly, ivory, other precious woods, brass, iron, marble, cinnamon, odors. It goes on and on. Right. Basically, he's listing every industry in his ancient culture that he can think of to basically say this impacted everything. everything. Right. And this is yeah. prophetic. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that the reach of a sentient AI and put together with world leadership that is going to require us become loyal and align ourselves with it, it very much points to this is exactly the vehicle of the beast system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, that verse ends with, and the souls of men. Yeah, oh, and yes. slaves, that is human yes. souls. Wow. Yes, it does, actually. Throughout the process of getting this book ready for print, I know that Dr. Thomas Horn, our father, he was always talking about how urgent the message in this book was, how timely, and he kept saying, mm -hmm. this message must get out. Yes. And of course, he was concerned about big tech suppression of the story, and yeah. I'm sure they'll be doing everything that they can to contain yeah. what we've been talking about over the last few weeks. But he believed, talking about my father, he believed that evil supernatural forces were absolutely capable of indwelling mm -hmm. our technology. Oh, absolutely. We talked a couple of weeks ago, Sharon and Derek have mentioned several times this black box mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. terms of artificial intelligence, the softwares. The, the, the people that have developed it have said there's parts of it we don't even understand how it works, but it's producing the results we want, so we're going to keep moving forward. It's a form of arms race. The rest yeah. of the world is doing it too. But getting back to the sense that Dad had, mm -hmm. putting this book together, talking about this technology becoming sentient, if it's not already, do you think that artificial intelligence has anything to do with the abomination of desolation? Dad talked a lot about the possibility of... AI, having the ability to be indwelt by an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. And so when you read the scripture, it says, he was given the power to give life to the beast. Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking about some human figure raises, rises to power and can give life to the beast, what kind of a success story would that be if some very, very popular political or economic figure said, hey, this is the ultimate creation, this is my mirror neuron computer here that has gone sentient and is a replication of a human being or become right. sentient. That would be the vehicle that this control would, would take place through. But here's something that's already happening that a lot of people are not aware of. They are currently making holographic images of people. There's a Michael Jackson concert mm -hmm. that has happened after his death mm -hmm. and it was a holographic concert. Absolutely. Right? So what if this figure in tandem with his sentient AI were to stand in the temple because they also are mimicking dead figures. What if yeah. he were to recreate, oh, I don't know, Hitler or Stalin, or right. what if he recreated Jesus? Yes. And then the entire world yeah. were to stand in awe and say, oh God, 
And I mean, oh God. Literally. Right. Literally. Right. Yeah. It is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's wow. just not the way we expected it because John the Revelator was writing to his culture and didn't know how to put it into words. Would they bow down and worship this thing? Right. It He's would be coming. the ultimate blasphemy. Oh, and exactly. The when the Antichrist comes, he is not going to come and be really evil and go, hey, gosh, mm -hmm. right. I'm that Antichrist guy. Right. He's going to say he's Christ. Anti means in place of, mm -hmm. right? not yes. against, although he will be against. It means in place of. I am Jesus Christ. Here I am. Wow. Worship me. Yeah. And the image of the beast, which is something that we, I think, misinterpret because we look at the English definition of the word image. The Greek word is icon. Sharon has spoken about this and written about this um, in the sense of a, an idol. Mm -hmm. wow. um, but consider an idol that is actually able to move and speak and talk, unlike the images made of wood and stone 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago. This would be very, very effective in conveying this anti-Christ oh, sure. religion yeah. and establishing it. And I'm glad to see that uh, we're thinking along the same lines mm -hmm. as, as Tom. Uh, those 10 kings... I have seen other interpretations who suggest that those 10 kings without a kingdom are actually tech leaders, CEOs of powerful tech companies. Yeah. And that's interesting, but our understanding is we uh, have produced, what, 230 episodes now of Unraveling Unra Revelation? Yeah, we just keep going on. That when we're looking at Revelation and trying to interpret the imagery that John wrote 2,000 years ago, we look for naturalistic explanations that don't really capture what John was trying to convey. We think those 10 kings are spirit beings. Mm -hmm. Other fallen entities, whether they're currently in the abyss or part of that group that was dispatched to earth to administer God's creation after the Tower of Babel, as Moses um, said in, in Deuteronomy 32, verse 8, when God gave the nations their inheritance, he numbered them according to the number of the sons of God. That is a reference to angelic beings who then rebelled and decided to take worship for themselves. We think those 10 kings come from that group, perhaps. We're dealing with spiritual beings because the Antichrist, the spirit that indwells the human we call the Antichrist, is also a spirit being. So I think that's where we need to look for they, the ultimate understanding. But what role will technology play mm -hmm. in all of this? That's Absolutely. the key reason people need to get this book. And what if those spirits, those 10 spirit kings, take over 10 AIs? Mm -hmm. And that's what makes them seem like they're sentient. Right. Because these 10 kings have finally been given access. And it's because these humans are foolish enough. Elon Musk says we're summoning the demon. Well, he's, he says, but we've still got to do it. These individuals are foolish enough to summon these spirits yeah. right into these machines. Absolutely. Wow. And here's something to think about, too. If and when this holographic Jesus stands in the temple and the world worships him, he will have access to every theological database in the world. Mm -hmm. It will be, oh my God, all the questions I always wanted to ask God. Yeah. And here he is, he can answer my questions. And the book of Revelation says over and over, don't be deceived. Mm -hmm. Even the elect would mm -hmm. be deceived yes. if it were possible. What's that if it were possible? It's this moment of wisdom where somehow you stand back and the Holy Spirit says something's not right. right. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Right. Because they'll have every single explanation, every single rebuttal that a human brain can come up with. I don't think that's God because it will immediately come back. In right. 0.3 seconds, it will have an answer that rebuttals every little thing right. that you said and a hundred other things that you didn't think to ask or a rebuttal that you would have come up with. It already has an mm -hmm. answer. So there is coming a day when, when it comes to human versus AI and the Antichrist is the ghost in the machine. Mm -hmm. At this yep. point, we will be at a cross roads where as the human being in the room, your soul will either recognize right. the danger for what it is Absolutely. because the Holy Spirit right. has indwelt yes. you and says, look, it all looks good. All the answers are there. Every single thing you thought to ask, the answer's there yeah. in 0 0.3 seconds. The machine has the answer, but something in your gut that right. cannot yeah. be rebuttaled in any way by any logic, yeah. human or machine says, walk away. Amen. Turn your back on that. Amen. You've got to have the Holy Spirit in you on that day. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What's really interesting is that, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, we, Derek and I get a lot of emails and questions, and I know you guys do too. What if I'm in a car accident and I'm unconscious? And all of this begins right. to happen, and they force it up on me. What if I'm given the chip, the mark, without ever saying yes? I wake up the and it's there. The scripture says, mm -hmm. take the mark and... Worship the beast. 
That's that free will moment. Right. You will have a free will chance. The Lord's not going to allow your free will to be taken away. Right. He will give you an opportunity to say yes or no. And if you say yes to the beast system, that's your last free will choice. Right. It's horrifying. It is Except horrifying. Except we know that it's coming. Yes. I think whenever you reach that moment where you do give over to that entity, the Antichrist, I think that things in your own spirit will change and it will make it easier for you to be those kinds of people that would aggressively attack mm -hmm. yes. all of those around. Yes, because you wonder how can controlled. that barbaric spirit emerge mm -hmm. through, through rejection of God and, and Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. Yeah. There's a World Economic Forum paper that was put out this year. I think I've mentioned it before. Uh, talking about AI, and there are three points to it. One is Presidio AI framework. Presidio is a military term. So this is essentially a military defense network of AI framework towards safe generative AI models. It's that foolish idea that mankind can control it. Mm -hmm. Part two, unlocking value from generative AI. Guidance for responsible transformation. Uh -huh. Part three, generative AI governance shaping a collective global future. These entities, these people, these, all of these planners for governance of the globe, they want us all to be singing from that same hymn sheet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. except the hymn is going to be in worship of the Antichrist, yeah. not in Christ. It's, it's really telling that this paper issued by the World Economic Forum calling for a, a safe generative AI model, the Presidio, in, in Spanish, Presidio is a fortified military encampment. Mm -hmm. We talked about this in a previous program with uh, Carl Gallops and Zef Porat. The word garden, gan in Hebrew, is a cognate for an older term in ancient uh, Persian dialect, paradisa, from which we get the word paradise. The word garden, as in the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. was intended to represent an enclosed, fortified encampment, basically, but a garden reserved for the king and his select guest, his family, as it were. This is oh, just a clever way of saying we're going to come up with an alternative garden based on technology. Exactly. That's mm. good. That's good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to make sure that you know how you can get your copy of this incredible final book, Final Warning, from the late Dr. Thomas R. Horn in the Summoning the Demon Super Collection. This amazing collection includes Dr. Thomas Horn's final book, Summoning the Demon, Artificial Intelligence and the Image of the Beast, that reveals how tech singularity will bring an all-powerful artificial mind to life. The trigger event that will make 666 the mark of the beast mandatory overnight. What the future of a marked society will look like the new face of transhuman supernatural warfare and how Christians must prepare for what is coming. But this incredible collection also includes, for a limited time, the brand new Dr. Thomas Horn Definitive Skywatch TV Collection. This unimaginable and historical TV anthology is valued at $99.95 all by itself. It contains a total of 96 episodes, over 45 hours of content on eight DVDs and is not available anywhere else or online. And includes classic series like Zenith 2016, The Milieu, Belly of the Beast, Saboteurs, The Wormwood Prophecy, The Messenger, Zeitgeist 2025, Legion, and more. But we're still not finished. You'll also receive Trajectory, Tracking the Approaching Tribulation Storm, this unprecedented masterpiece by legendary authors Dr. Thomas Horn, Terry James, Tim Moore, and others provides in-depth analysis of emerging topics like pandemic tidal waves, catastrophic weather changes, Mideast malevolence, and so much more. This unprecedented collection sold separately holds a retail value of over $140. Yours now for your donation of only $39.99 plus shipping and handling. So don't delay. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now using the camera app on your phone for instant access to this special collection. You can also visit us at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985 and ask for the Summoning the Demon 
super collection now. Absolutely unbelievable. You know, Joe, when you were talking about the Tower of Babel and the system and all of that, years ago, gosh, I think we were still living in Indiana, your dad sent me an email, and you may remember this, Nita, he asked me if DNA could be activated. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. And I said yes, because epigenetically, you can methylate or remove the methyl group from a gene sequence. Right. And you can either shut it off or turn it on. That's one of the things that the junk DNA, it's been discovered that they have a process in that. Hmm. Recently, there was a study showing that the behavior of the father two weeks before conception alters the child. So if you are doing things that are, we'll call sinful, okay. seriously, those behaviors can alter the child. Wow. Now, back in the day, there were a lot of mm. behaviors in Babel, and it was said that Nimrod... Began to be. That was these behaviors. His father, perhaps his grandfather, had been doing these ritual practices uh -huh. that affected the offspring. And then these continued practices affected the epigenetics within the person. Wow. And you could change. Wow. Wow. We actually expanded on that in our book, uh, Veneration, as we looked at 2 Samuel 21, which was where David and his mighty men did battle with other descendants of the giant, is how it's generally translated into English. Descendants of the Rapha is a better translation in Hebrew, but the word translated descendant in English, the Hebrew word yeladeh, does not mean literal blood descendant. It means one who is a member of a group into which one has been consecrated or initiated. Mm -hmm. And one of them who nearly killed David, in the Bible it looks like it says Ishbi ben Ab. You remember that weird name from 2 Samuel, Ishbi ben Ab? It's actually Ishvi ben Ov, which means Ishvi, son of the owner of a necromantic ritual pit. In oh, other wow. words, mm -hmm. son of one who summoned, like Saul, the night wow. before he died, summoned spirits from the netherworld, which suggests to us that this was going on amongst the Philistines mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that Goliath and the other Philistine giants, while they were of exceptional stature, were probably also demon-possessed or at least demon-worshipping mm -hmm. warriors perhaps members of a warrior cult. They became fit extensions for a habitation. Right. And the wow. fact that Goliath was, depending on your translation, either six foot nine or nine foot nine, may be due to genes that were switched on through these occult practices. Mm -hmm. They were literally summoning the demon. Summoning the demon. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now think wow. of all the cults and secret societies mm -hmm. yeah. throughout the world. Right. We have no idea what they do. Right. I'm not going to say I think they do this or that. But I will tell you that there are behaviors going on throughout the world, whether you're a member of a secret right. society or not, that are leading to results that make you more fit yeah. for habitation. And a lot of you may not know this, but Sharon is not just a TV panelist on a Christian television program. Right. She actually graduated with honors mm -hmm. and holds a degree in molecular biology. Mm -hmm. And so my Which is why your dad asked me. That's why my <laughs> father would often ask Sharon. Yeah. He said, she is our resident biologist. And if I want this to, you know, to hold water, I got to make sure Sharon agrees with it. Mm -hmm. You were always a, a great resource. You and Derek both, always a yeah. great resource when he was running some of the science. You know, mm -hmm. The science <laughs> asked the Gilberts to make sure that it held water. So, <laughs> what, what I think is really ironic here, and I know you want to conclude with uh, an excerpt from the book, but... Uh, as we've been recording these programs, I've gone on a couple of different AI chat bots to find out what they think about what we do here at Skywatch TV and about Tom Horn specifically. Right. Ironically, and I think it's not coincidental, the responses universally are that we are leaders in creating sensational theories attributing current world affairs, technology trends, and paranormal phenomena directly to biblical prophecies about the apocalypse, demons, and unfolding spiritual warfare ideas largely outside mainstream scholarship. But of well, course, I consider if the, that high praise. If the AI was yes. inhabited by a demon, <laughs> it's exactly what you'd expect him to say. 
<laughs> but I consider that high spread. I, I mean, seriously, that, that AI is probably thinking that they're dissing us, but I don't care. Uh, no, I, I agree. I better myself. Bring me That's the true. people who want to know what the answers in the Bible for those particular things mm -hmm. are. They don't exist in the church anywhere. The church won't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Enter Tom. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 What a legacy. Amen. Amen. Yeah, what a legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to read something from the book because if you've been watching this series and you've heard us articulate or assert over the last few weeks that most of the experts agree at this point that this technology is not going to slow at all, mm -hmm. even if there are dilemmas with some of the judicial reasons to pause, some of the ethical boundaries are being absolutely stretched already too thin, and where we're going, there, there really, really isn't any way to put the genie back in the bottle. If you're hearing that, I want to give you just a taste of how my father concludes this book, Always One of Hope. So let me read directly from Summoning the Demon, Artificial Intelligence, and the Image of the Beast. These are Tom Horn's words, and he takes us all the way back to the simple biblical story of David and Goliath. He says, quote, Why is that story, the story of David and Goliath, important to this book? Because Goliath was a Nephilim and was defeated by a young servant of God, if the arrival of these beings or the spirit of their sins is the preeminent sign of the end times, David defeating one is germane as well. You know, my father was always capable of writing things that m mostly horrified yep. <laughs> and, and raised alarm. But he always said behind the scenes, he would always say, we do this so that we can ready the world for what is coming, mm -hmm. so that at times of great question, when people don't trust what they're seeing, what they're hearing, maybe some of the Christians that have been out there speaking the truth in the lead up yep. will now have the world's attention yep. as the ones that kind of said it first. So he leaves behind a giant legacy and just a tiny, tiny, tiny taste of that legacy now lives in what is a multi-disc set called... The Dr. Thomas Horn Definitive Skywatch TV Collection. It's the one that we've been making you aware of over the last several weeks. And it comes in the package with Summoning the Demon, Artificial Intelligence, and the Image of the Beast by Dr. Thomas Horn, myself, and Allie Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, this disc series is all of his programs throughout the years here at Skywatch TV. Anytime he had a book coming out, We've got the whole series, each book, and it now resides in this collection. Friends, one last book, one last warning, but he left us with some marching orders. Mm -hmm. Even while he was at the ICU in his final moments, he was still saying something to the effect of moving forward, mm -hmm. moving forward. And he mm -hmm. gestured like this with his hand, moving forward. There was no part of my dad that was finished, and there was no part of him that expected for us to be finished either. We have now done everything we can to pick up the mantle and continue his amazing legacy. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're all out of time. Keep your eyes on the prize, which is Jesus Christ. We will be back.